the indie author revolution has been around for more than a decade, but we indies continue to push the boundaries of what we're capable of, from getting over initial prejudices to staring down perfectionism and author imposter syndrome, we've become a force to reckon with. Now, after years of hustle and grind, we indies are rebelling again. Gone are the days of publishing a book a month until we drop, and in its place we're sowing the seeds of a better way. A way with more ease, abundance, and flow. Get ready to learn about indie authorship from a whole new perspective. We're about to cover everything from releasing your poverty mentality to manifesting your millionaire author destiny. I'm Carissa Andrews, and this is the Author Revolution Podcast. Well, hi there, and welcome back to the Author Revolution Podcast. Guys, today we have a really great episode for you. I am talking with Only James about Patreon. Now, for those of you who listened to Only's interview last year, we talked a lot about her viral success on TikTok. But if you were listening, you also know that she is doing incredibly well on Patreon. And now she's in the process of actually building out two courses for authors on how to best utilize Patreon. And so when you look at the success that she's having on this platform, it gives us some food for thought on what other ways we can leverage platforms like Patreon or just use our author network to do more or to be better or to pivot in ways that help us to be more ourselves. Like for example, with myself, and you'll hear this in the podcast interview, I've been using Patreon more as my social platform in addition to delivering the extra content like the chapters as I am writing them and things like that. So there's different ways that we can utilize things like Patreon or Kickstarter or just our author platform in general to make it more our own. And now if you're an author who's new to Patreon and looking to change something up or wants to learn how to leverage Patreon, you're definitely going to want to listen to this podcast episode because only has a ton of information that she's dishing out, and you're going to want to start taking notes right away. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hi, Only. I am so excited that you are back on the Author Revolution podcast. The last time you're here was, oh gosh, it feels like a year ago. I don't think it was quite that, but it's it was quite a bit. And we were talking about your success on TikTok and for you as an author. And we happened to touch on the subject of Patreon. Well, I've had my audience asking me questions about Patreon, and you are one of the people I know who is like so successful when it comes to having your Patreon running. You have over 1,400 patrons, and you're earning over $14,000 a month just on Patreon alone. So yeah. I think you're kind of a, a, an expert in this field at this point. <laughs> so, I think I am now. <laughs> yeah, you totally are. So how long have you been running your Patreon to get yourself to this point? I started Patreon, I want to say, maybe 2020, 2020 or 2021, like okay. right around there. Yeah. Yep. And for a long time, I didn't have a lot of subscribers. I think when Necessary Evils took off, I maybe had 35 subscribers, you know, okay. loyal, yeah. loyal subscribers. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. But I wasn't really offering too much. It was mostly just like read as I write, you know, that kind of thing. Like I would occasionally throw up like a little mini fic or I would throw up some artwork or something if I had it. I would let people have access to cover reveals, blurb reveals, stuff like that. But I really hadn't found like the niche of like what people really were looking for at that point. So there wasn't a whole lot of like exponential growth as far as like seeing my list kind of expand until Necessary Evil started. And then I had a lot more I could offer people in terms of like content. Sure. That did that clicking together with Necessary Evils, did that help you then to create a better niche content creation like calendar? Did, did yeah. that help at all? It was, yeah. I wasn't really as committed to Patreon as I should have been in the beginning. Like if I had, if I could go over and do it all over again, I would have had content ready to go before I started Patreon so that people not only had stuff immediately when they signed up to my Patreon that they could access, but I would have like had stuff ready to go in that I wouldn't every week have to be worrying about what's going up that week. 
I would have stuff like I would be working a month ahead, essentially. Like, so in that aspect, I wish I could kind of go back and do it again. I also would realize that everything is content. Everything is content. Like yeah. I have, I have put up stickies of like me trying to draw out sex configurations between four people, <laughs> like little stick figure drawings on a sticky note. And people went crazy over it. Like, Everything is content. Like, don't yeah. throw away extended scenes. Don't throw away scenes that don't make it into the book. Don't, don't disregard anything. If you wrote it, if you made it, somebody will probably want to see it, even if it's in the rawest form. People like having that behind the scenes access. And the more you give them, the more they get hungry for it, even if it's not like what they signed up for, even if they're, you know, they signed up for the work in progress or they signed up just for the mini thing. Like the more it looks like you're giving them, the more loyal they are as patrons. Yeah, that's super cool. I think it's really a, an interesting side note for like social media in general too, where it's, I think we as creators, we get so hung up, either we get this idea in our heads that we're not like, no one's going to care about that. You know, like newsletters are, are the same way where it's like, no one's going to care what I'm doing today. Or, you know, the fact that I've had three cups of coffee and I'm addicted or that I did a workout with, you know, Jillian Michaels or who knows, you know, whatever it is. But yet there are people out there where that sets an example or it resonates with them. Yeah. And they're like, oh my God, she's a person or he's a, he's a guy yeah. that like I could have bumped into on the street, you know? And sure. I think readers really love that. I send out a weekly newsletter. And if I don't send out that newsletter, people yell at me. <laughs> like nice. It's true because I have a serial that I run in my newsletter and Every week they get a chapter. Well, now it's every other week they get a chapter because keeping up with four chapters for a whole separate story was a lot. But yeah, so like every other um, newsletter is a serial chapter, but those two in between newsletters are nothing but promo for me. Yeah. And every time I send out a newsletter, it, it promos my Patreon. And every time I get 50 to 100 new subscribers. That's every amazing. Time. Oh my gosh. So, okay. You're, you're talking about you're using your newsletter to get people onto Patreon. So yep. let's, let's back up a little bit. If an author is new to Patreon and they're thinking about starting up, what's the first thing they should consider then? Should they start considering like the, uh, obviously the, the way that it gets set up, but I'd love to know your, your take on like the marketing side of things too, and getting people onto the list. Where, where would someone new start? You would want to start with making sure that everybody knows you have a Patreon in every way possible. At the bottom of every one of my newsletters, whether it's a serial one or a promo one, it always has a blurb that says, don't want to wait for my next book, read it as I write it, blah, 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 want to see minifics, want to see, you know, the spiel. Smart. And then yeah. there's a button that says, join my Patreon. It's right there. It's in every single newsletter. I never have to fix it, touch it. It's just always there. My link tree has my Patreon as the second link. Nice. On my link tree. Okay. And I get tons and tons of hits. I would say thousands of hits on my link tree. It's in the back of all of my books that there is a Patreon. Pretty much anywhere I can talk about my Patreon, I do. I okay. put it on Instagram every time there's a new chapter. My social media girl makes a little graphic. She puts it on there with like a teaser for it. And like, hey, this is up on Patreon now. Like, So I used to never get subscribers because I didn't want to tell people I had a Patreon because I never wanted them to think I was like scamming them out of money or I was being right. greedy or whatever. I had yeah. to really change my mindset about that. Like, no, this is just exclusive content I'm offering for an additional fee. This isn't like, oh, you don't get this because you don't have $5 a month or whatever. Like, this is, Yeah. This and you're not holding anyone to it either. Content. Yeah. yeah. And let's be real. If somebody really wants your content, $5 is less than they pay for a cup of coffee at Starbucks. Right. And it's only once a month. So, you and know. it's once a month. I spend $5 at Starbucks far more often than I care to think <laughs> about. It. I can subscribe to 100 Patreons for what I spend at Starbucks. Right. Like, oh, so my goodness. You have to kind of stop looking at it as like people are doing you a favor mm -hmm. and start just looking at it for what it is, which is an exchange of goods and services. You know, like yeah. you're offering exclusive content and they're giving you $5 plus a month, depending on what they want from you, you know, and changing that mindset into more of a business mindset of like people can't subscribe to something they don't know exists that helped me really like realize that there's a lot of opportunities to tell people about my patreon that i was completely overlooked for sure one of the things that i find interesting with patreon too is that 
at least for me, I, so I'm getting, I don't, I have a, a PA. She's not a fan of doing social media either. And I need to find someone probably that wants to do it. I myself am too busy to like constantly be coming up with content. And so I, I, for this year, I was like, you know what, I'm going to pull back on my fiction side of things just to see what happens. Like, is this type mm-hmm. of content creation really necessary? But what I found with Patreon is that rather than posting on, you know, Instagram or posting on Facebook or something, or just doing a mass thing, when something inspiring comes up, I'll post it on Patreon and just make it public so that now yep. that's become like my social media platform in addition to the exclusive content that they can then access. And that's a great way to bring people to your Patreon. I know a lot of people who will put up like free first chapters of their stories on their Patreon and then put the link to their Patreon. Like want to read for chapter one of my book, you can read it over on my Patreon. Um, yeah. I know a lot of people will do almost like a radish type thing. Will there'll be like the first three chapters on my Patreon are free and then you can like pay a dollar to unlock the rest of it or that sort of thing. So there's yeah. always ways to drive traffic to your Patreon by even offering free content or like you do using it almost like a social media feed so that they're constantly over there anyway. And they might get curious about what the locked content is. Right, right. And it's yeah. been a lot of fun too. I haven't seen a dip of any kind in sales or anything like that. And if anything, it's just been, you know, people trickling in, it hasn't been like this mass exodus or anything, but it's been fun to interact, been more fun actually to interact with the people who are there because they're more excited and engaged. They're much more engaged on Patreon. Like when I put a chapter up, I get at least 60 to a hundred people responding per chapter. Every time I put a new chapter up, it's like real time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, Like I basically have 1400 beta readers. So like I know in real time that something isn't working or something is tripping them up or they don't understand something like, and I can fix that as I go before it reaches thousands and thousands of people where I can't fix it or I have to take it back or they, you know, they have to re-download an error. You know what I mean? Like, so it, it actually, it works like in a really symbiotic way. It's kind of really cool. And I know a lot of authors were like, you know, you give an art copy to every single one of your patrons, like, doesn't that take away from your sales? I'm like, one, they've paid for that art copy 10 times over. Like, by the time they get an art copy, they've paid $50 for it. You know, what are you talking (laughs) about? Yeah. But also, I put up a book, like, when Maniac released on the 16th, by the 17th, I already had 600 reviews up on Amazon. Yeah, I'm up to almost 2,000 reviews, and it's March 2nd, 3rd? I don't know. Um, (laughs) March something. It's because because they were reading in real time. So then they get that art, they finish the story, and they immediately go and they review it on Goodreads and Amazon. So I'm getting, like, to have 2,000 reviews in two weeks. Yeah. You know, there's far more benefit for me and using Patreon, like, and using it during my work in progress, then, like, then there's any drawbacks. There's definitely no drawbacks. And so many of my patrons will still go buy the book. Right. They'll buy it. Right. Yeah. And they'll put it on Cam, you know, they'll read it and use the Cam, you know, they'll do Kindle Unlimited and they'll read through it again. Like, so I'm, I really don't lose money in any way on Patreon. Like, there's no downside to Patreon. Yeah. It, it's just such a neat, neat platform and the way that it's evolved over the years has has been really cool to watch too I remember signing up for it like I don't know probably 2017 and it looks so so wildly different than it does now so it's it's great and I think the way that it can be molded to to the like author and to the reader is so beneficial the readers can interact and they do interact in a way that they haven't at least I haven't felt on social media for a long time. Like you get a heart and yeah. then they go where if these people are reading it, they're like, Oh my God, when's the next chapter coming out? You know? It's, yeah. And it's they great. get feral for it. And then yeah. they tell other people like, yeah. and so it's word of mouth and it gets your audience that isn't on Patreon excited for like when the book launches. So you have that buzz and, and stuff, the anticipation sort of built in to, to Patreon, which is awesome. And, you know, it all kind of just feeds into the rest of it. You know, people talking about it. Like when I put graphics up for my, my, my next book is called Paladin. When I put graphics up for Paladin, people who are reading it on Patreon will rave about it in the comments 
And then that gets people excited and curious. And then they'll go to Patreon and they'll be like, you know, I don't usually read books as they're written, you know, but, yeah. but yeah. I'm going to do it this time because I can't wait. One of my readers calls it literary edging. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's like, that's, she's like, that's what you do. You're like, you literary, you're, you do literary edging. Like, like you make everybody work for every chapter or whatever. And I'm just like, <laughs> I, I loved that. I just thought it was such a great like saying, like how to be developed a new kink. Right. Um, <laughs> But like, but it all works together, you know, like the whole, the whole thing has just really gelled like together really organically. Like I didn't set out to like, like with any grand master plan, it's all been like trial and error and figuring out just exactly what works and how, and then kind of trying to like make that, do that on a bigger scale, you know, like, right. and and honestly, it's uh, it's a lot about manifesting it. I like I hate saying that because I know a lot of people just roll their eyes. But like this, the, the beginning of the year, I was looking at my goals and I'm like, okay, so my goal is to make sixteen thousand a month on Patreon by the end of the year. If only five dollar subscribers sign up, that means I should I would need like twenty two hundred subscribers. But I'm like, I'm not going to look at how many subscribers. I'm going to look at how much I want to make. So I'm like sixteen thousand yeah. ish a month will bring me approximately $250,000 a year just off of Patreon. Right? Yeah. And as soon as I wrote that out and I stuck it on my little board, all of a sudden the numbers just started going. I only had $12,000 at the beginning of January. Yeah. And now here I am and it's March 1st and I'm already up to like 14, five ish a month. Yeah. And that's just monthly. That doesn't, that doesn't even bring in what I make yearly every month like people sign up for the yearly membership so i will get that like whole year in that month so like sure. last month i made almost twenty two thousand dollars off of patreon holy cow just yeah in between monthly and yearly subscribers you know and the other thing i did that makes a huge difference is i cap my larger tier so my fifty dollar a month tier is only 50 subscribers well, it was. Now it's a hundred, and I and I did that because one, I wanted it to be very exclusive because I do give a lot more content away at that level because I do the book boxes for the fifty dollars here. But two, the more exclusive it feels, the more anxious people are to have it. Sure. Um, and so in January, because I I had capped the tier and people have been like, when are you going to open it again? When are you going to open it again? I was like, screw it. I will add another fifty openings. So it'll be a hundred. And then when that closes, I'll wait until next January and I'll open another 50 if, if it's still maxed out. And in two days I had maxed out those hundred because I was like, when they're gone, they're gone. Yeah. And people were like, I want access to those book boxes, you know? And, and so like by offering just that once a year, you know, it makes it more exclusive and it makes it more like uh, time sensitive. So oh, people want it. It's the same thing when I sold those book boxes. You know, my book boxes were super expensive. They were almost $300, you know. But yeah. when I told them, like, listen, you've got, there's only a hundred of them. When they're gone, they're gone. They sold out in five minutes, you know. Right, right. So, so I have learned that by making something time sensitive, that it really does cause this sort of like, oh, I need it now kind of thing because I might not have access to it again. And I'm the same way. Like if you oh, give sure. me like, like, oh, I want that. And it's like, oh, but you've only got this much. Like, I will be so anxious until it's in my hand. Like, but I didn't know if that made me the outlier or if there are other people out there like that. But, I think they created the term it. FOMO for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, it really is true. So like, if you make, if you make it something that's, you know, something they really want, like they will, they will pay you for the opportunity to have it, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, and it, if you're giving them that content that makes them feel good, you know what I mean? Because it's exclusive, yep. because it's fun, because it's entertaining them and it's doing the thing that they are wanting it to do. You're, you're hitting that market perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about your tiers because you do have some, some amazing tiers. And I know authors, when they first start out with Patreon, they kind of get stuck in that realm. It's almost like doing a Kickstarter where they're like, I don't know what to do with these things. So how, do yeah. you, how did you come up with your tier? Don't get me started on Kickstarter because... 
I see right. people doing Kickstarter and it just looks like chaos. It looks like it's they're doing hieroglyphics. I'm like, I don't understand any of it. <laughs> so how how do you how would you recommend or how did you come about creating your tiers so that you knew what people were really looking for and how to break them down in a way that made them either want to do, do the next level or so I kind of looked at it from the beginning like I sort of modeled it in the very beginning after um, another author friend of mine, Nora Phoenix, um, because she had been doing good on on Patreon and her tiers seemed to make sense. It was like the $5 tier got like one work in progress chapter a week. They got access to like the mini fix and they got access to like cover and blurb reveal type thing. And then the next tier up, which was, I don't remember what hers was, but I went to with $10 they got up to three chapters of the work in progress a week and that sort of thing. So in addition to what you get in the, the, you know, $5 tier. And so for a long time, I only had like five, 10. And then I think I had like a $20 tier and the $20 tier uh, really was more about like upgraded merch and you got like a signed paperback. And that was fine when I really didn't have a whole lot of Patreon, you know, like involvement or so it did okay. It wasn't until like, I really started to see a lot more movement on Patreon that I was like, okay, these tiers, like, they're, they're all right, but they're not really working for me for what I wanted for them. Mm -hmm. So that's when I really started looking into the merch options that Patreon had, because I was like, I can send out books easily, right? I can send out hardcovers or paperbacks or whatever. Easily, that's not a problem. But I can't create my own like in-home merch store and there was no way to to merge that my other merch shop with patreon there just wasn't a way to do it cohesively and easily so i was like i'll let patreon do my exclusive merch for patreon and i will keep printful slash my merch store on my website separately that way you know i don't have to worry about who's who's owed what when because patreon handles that they know Every three months, somebody's do something and that's their problem, not mine. Because yep. if I have to keep up with who's who gets what when, they're never getting it because that's just who I am as a person. <laughs> um, like, but at least you my, know that. My that's ADHD, good. Like, <laughs> between my autism and my ADHD, they're never getting it. It's never happening. My object permanence issue will, will make everybody very sad. <laughs> so... I looked into Patreon's options for merch and I was like, my lower tiers, my five and ten dollar tiers, they get like um mini prints, they get stickers, stuff like that. That's all like still merch that they want. It's just on a smaller scale. Yep. And then the only real difference between my ten and my twenty dollar tier is that the twenty dollar tier gets elevated merch. So they get posters, they get mugs, they get t shirts. So a little bit higher quality, a little bit like bigger items, but still all the other stuff stays the same. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, that's really the only difference between the $20 and the $10 tier, but it doesn't matter because they still sign up for it. They want that elevated merch. So they will still take yeah. the $20 over the 10 and then the $25 tier, they get a paperback every time I launch a book. So they get a signed paperback and that goes to them once the book, you know, is, is live. And then for a while, the $50 tier got assigned hardcover. But now what I do is instead when a series ends, they get the exclusive book box with all of the special edition covers signed, a bunch of artwork that is only for the the book box, and then like certain exclusive artwork uh, by Heidi, who does all the really nice artwork in my merch store. Uh, She does exclusive stuff just for the book box. So there's like... It's basically like a book box you would see from like Fairy Root or one of those sort of things, but it's all exclusive to to my book and that specific series. Cool. Um, so now that's what happens like for the fifty dollar tier. They just have to kind of wait a little bit longer for it, but then they get that exclusive access for free when other people pay almost three hundred dollars for it. So that's awesome. So do you create exclusive covers just for Patreon, or are the exclusive covers for other reasons as well? No, they'll still be available. And that's what I told people. Like everything, like all of the exclusive special edition cover books will be available in my merch shop. Like they'll still be able to buy all of the books, but the artwork 
they'll never be able to have that. The bookmarks, they'll never have that. All of the stuff that's exclusive artwork and stuff for the book boxes will only go to patrons and okay. the people who got access to that those book boxes. But all of the other stuff, they can still buy in the store. Because I'm not trying to make it to where it's like something that they'll never have access to. But like, sure. you know, for that money they pay every month, they should have access to stuff, to some stuff that nobody else will ever have. So like some of that is exclusive to those book boxes. That is really cool. I love that a lot. I've been thinking, like, how do you go about doing your exclusive covers? Do you have a printer that you work with? Or is it like something that you design through Ingram Spark or something like that? And it just happens to be an exclusive? For Necessary Evils, um, Molly, I have a, you know, cover designer on staff. So she made the the artwork and everything for the for the book boxes. And they're doing, they, these are being done through Ingram. Now, Obsidian Flame Crate, they're doing an only only book box like an exclusive one with just my next book coming out paladin and they have all kinds of stuff that they're doing and they have a printer that exclusively does like really fancy covers they do like the sprayed edges like they have access to people who do like the foiling on the top so going forward for paladin um and those books those boxes for jericho's boys those might have a little bit more upgraded elements to them because I'm working with uh, Rachel and them over there in Taylor and they're kind of helping me find like the right printers in China and places like that where they're willing to do like, you know, fancier things that I didn't have access to for Necessary Evils. But the covers for Necessary Evils are badass anyway. Like they were they were really cool. She did such a great job. The the covers underneath the dust jackets are so cool. So there's there's still a lot of really good stuff, but this is all done in house versus probably the future ones will be done with uh, some outside printers. Gotcha. That's really cool though. It, it it's nice to see like what the options are too, because authors are often yeah. like they they'll look at it and go, I want to do that, but I could never do that. And yet you can. Right. And yeah, yeah, exactly. And that was the nice thing about like having Rachel and Taylor is they're like, no, no, this is what we do for a living. So this is, we know all of the people. So, so having them as an asset is, is really helpful. And they've been so sweet about sharing research and, and stuff like that. So I'm lucky in that I, I tend to just meet the right people at the right time and go from there. That's because you're having fun and manifesting, obviously. That's right. I really am. <laughs> I really am. Like people yeah. look at me like I'm insane, but I'm just like, no, like, like seriously, like I, I made it happen. And I tell everybody, like I had a nine hour physical on uh, Tuesday. So I was literally in the doctor's office from nine oh. thirty in the morning until late at night going from CT scans to like nutritionist to doctor, like for like just everything. I was all over that hospital and everybody, everywhere I go, people say the same thing what do you do? Cause I'm doing an executive health physical and I don't look like any executive, any of them have ever seen. I'm covered <laughs> in tattoos. Like, you know, and they all look at me and they're just like, and I'm like, I write romance novels. And they're like, what? You know, I'm like, yeah, I write romance novels, gay romance novels about psychopaths. And they're just like, can I get your name? Like yeah. everybody wants to like, I'm like, okay, but just know like what you're getting into. And but like people will say, like, how did you you make all this money like writing about gay psychopaths falling in love? And I'm like, yeah, because I made it happen. And like everybody just wants to hear more. Like I get asked so many times to like tell my story, you know. And yeah. I'm like, it's a simple story. Like I just decided it was mine and it is like I love that you just said that because I say that all the time on the podcast and anywhere where people will listen deciding is your superpower you just need to make the decision I love that you have to just say that it's yours and like it, that you're ready for it because you know the yes. universe provides it's a cheat code but you have to actually know how to like use it yep and you do that by deciding I love it it's so cool yeah. so when it comes back going back to patreon here when it comes yeah. to patreon have you gotten any like surprising feedback from your audience anything where you're like huh I did not expect that <laughs> I get a lot of feedback in that, like, some people will say, you know, I really didn't see this character doing something like that. That's really interesting. Like, is it because of X, Y, Z? Like, and they'll, like, they'll ask me for a further explanation. 
and they'll be way more on the money than I was when I did it because, you know, it's like, you know, they always say like, oh, why do you think the author wrote the curtains for blue? And the author's like, because I just wanted blue curtains. And everybody's like, oh, it was a manifestation of how the, the character <laughs> felt, but, you know, and it's like, it's never, it's, it never is that, at least not like right. consciously, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that's like a lot of times people will put connections to my books that I never connected, like the dots never connected for me. But that's why I did something. But like they'll pick sure. up on these like very subtle things and they'll be like, oh, that was an Easter egg, right? Or and I'm just like, sure. It totally yeah, was. <laughs> totally. I meant to do that. Like, I've killed off the same character in my book twice now and nobody's picked up on it. Uh, <laughs> name name it all. And the and name it all. And they just didn't pick up on it, which I don't know. If, like I'm a mess. And people always think it's by design and I'm just like, okay. But yeah, like I, I get a lot of, a lot of feedback in that respect. Sometimes I get some nasty comments, you know, or um, especially when I put up the, the one fix about, well, two, about like the foursome, the two couples being together in a relationship, but also like sexually, obviously I get a lot of harsh feedback about that because it's either them saying your characters would never do that. I'm like, they're my characters or yeah they would or just like you've ruined the you know the whole idea of this or you've ruined that I've had people send me emails saying that um oh my goodness but yeah, the, no. the fact that you tap into that that's great because you're you're spurring on like something visceral that's right. that's awesome I'm making them mad which means they cared yeah. enough to get mad in the first place and I had to kind of start looking at it that way I had to kind of be like okay well at least they cared enough to be mad but I also now put a huge disclaimer in front of any of those chapters on Patreon saying, this is a fic with these four characters in sexual situations. If you do not like it, keep scrolling. Don't leave me nasty comments because you read it and we're <laughs> mad that you read it. Just don't read it and be happy and scroll on. Like, you right. know what I mean? I had to be like, I don't want to hear your negative feedback anymore Like about it. Yeah. I heard it, duly noted. I'm going to do it anyway. But there's far more people who want it than the people who don't. So sure. I'm going to give the thousands of people who want it, you know, over the three or four that don't. Like, you just have to look at it that way. So it's sometimes hit or miss, you know, because like I said, you never know what comments you're going to get at the bottom of the screen. Like, you're kind of yeah. like, ooh, you know, but totally worth it anyway. And sometimes I, I get a little hurt about certain things people say, but then I'll think about it and I'll be like, okay, yeah, no, that makes sense. And I'll like go back and I'll kind of like recalibrate like yeah. to what I was thinking. But other times I have to be like, that's one person's opinion in a sea of thousands and they're entitled to that opinion and I'm entitled to ignore it. Like, you know? For sure. Is there so. anything in specific that they, that you found your audience really loves you to do on Patreon? Like you doing your mini fix or doing your artwork? Like, is there something that you do that they're like, the oh my God, this is the best? are by far the biggest draw. If okay. I will put up, I put up mini fix, especially if it's something that people say all the time, like, oh, I really wanted to see, like I had one, one of my MCs like was with a girl before he found the, the guy he ended up married to. And his ex-girlfriend was a real bitch. And everybody was just like, they called her the ice queen and all this stuff. And they wanted to see a mini fic of what happens when Jericho, his new husband and her came face to face with each other in a situation. So okay. I was like, okay. So I wrote that out and then I just threw it up there on Patreon. And I was like, hey, that fic you were all were hoping for. Well, it's there for $5 if you want it. Yeah. And a bunch of people signed up. Like, and that was how I came up with the whole foursome thing. Because everybody kept saying, like, oh, they would be so great together. Like, it makes sense that the four of them would all just end up together in this kind of, like, polycule type thing. Like, it makes sense. And it made sense to me, too. But I, when I had kind of brought it up before, it got so much pushback that I was like, well, I'm never going to put that in the main series. Because it will take it from mainstream to kink. And then I might lose my audience. Sure. And I don't really want to do that. Because I've somehow managed to ride this weird line of, like psychopaths but not so dark that it's not mainstream and I didn't want to lose that to like something that came out as being too kinky so I was like screw it I'll put up one test fix and if it does well then I might do more and if it doesn't whatever no harm no foul and I put it up and I got 300 subscribers in a day holy cow that's amazing yeah 
yeah, 300 subscribers in one day off of one 3,000 minific that took me literally two hours to write. I was just going to ask, like, like how, how big are these minifics? Okay, so 3,000 words? Tiny, tiny, 3,000 words, maybe. Like, oh my gosh. Maybe. And it's just, it's just knowing what it is that the audience wants. And they'll tell you. If oh, you sure. pull your audience, they'll tell you what they want to see. They'll tell you the couples they want to read about. They'll tell you the scenarios they want you to write. Like they will give you everything you need to I write what that. you need. You just have to actually have the time to do it. It's kind of like writing fanfic for your audience, you know, like sure. it, it's really what it boils down to. And like, why not let people pay you to write what they want you to write? You know? Like, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, that's super cool. Uh, one of the things that I have not done, um, I think it's just because uh, like I do so many different things that I'm like, oh, adding one more thing sounds like work. But when you put it like that, where it's just 3000 words, it's like, oh, shoot, I could do that. Like you said, in two hours and yeah. then be done with it. It's like, that's a chapter. And there's no it's, mindset yeah. to it because yeah. they're telling you what they want you to write. Right. Like, you've got the characters, you've got the scenario. You just have to put it on the page, right. you know, in the way that you do. And that's what they want is they want your voice, you know. Right. That's and super cool. Giving them the scene that they wish they had gotten to read, you know? That is really cool. I like that idea a lot. Maybe I'll have to start incorporating some of those at some point down the line. That's interesting. Now I got to pull my audience. Thanks only. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's the biggest help. Sometimes so they give me too many options and I'm like, oh God, like so I'll have like a list. story ideas. And I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> too many. Now I have, now I have more work to do because now I have to decide which one is the best right. thing. Right now, it's like, well, that's okay. I've got a spreadsheet, and I've, I'm set for the next three years. It's great. <laughs> exactly. Sorry, you're never getting another poll, guys, until I run out of ideas. For this right. One. Sorry. Oh, that's so smart. <laughs> so, what about um, new or not? We've talked about new authors, but what about authors who are already on Patreon, who are trying to make it work, but they're not quite sure how to? I don't know. I guess bridge the gap between where they're at and where they want to be with Patreon. Do you have any advice for those people? Because they're a little bit different, I feel like. Yes, they're definitely different. Um, the nice thing about being an uh, a, an author who is established is that you have an audience. You have what every newbie author wishes they had, which is like an audience. So you need to be using your newsletter. You need to be using your social media to let people know that you have a Patreon and to even ask them like, hey, what do you want to see on my Patreon? What would be enticing enough for you to be out five dollars every month to to go to my Patreon, you know, and some people are just like, oh, I never spend five dollars like, you know, but it's a lie. It's a lie, because if you make something interesting enough, I see people say it all the time. Oh, I hate Patreon, but I subscribe to yours because, you know. And yep. I say all the time, oh, only Patreon is so worth the five dollars or ten dollars or whatever. <laughs> like because I'm constantly putting up content. And if yep. you're constantly feeding them, they never feel like it's a waste of their money. Like right. if they know even if you only put up twice a week, as long as you consistently put something up twice a week, they're getting what they paid for. And that's all that really matters. So with an established audience, it's one a matter of figuring out what they want from you. Is there two characters that they're constantly asking for? Is there always like, oh, like these these two characters, like I really wish they had hooked up in this story or I wish I could have seen them do X or, you know, like I want more about them. Like what happened to them after they got together? Or like I want to see a day in the life of like what they do. I use it for um, for like basically beta testing characters. Like I have The Watch coming out. It's like a whole series of basically it's like a school for assassins. So originally it was going to be like the students falling in love with like the, the teacher kind of thing. But then I had these two characters that showed up in the first chapter of the, the first book and everybody was like, who are they? And I'm like, those guys, those are nobody. They're just throwaway characters. And they're like, no, no, we want their story. So like just for the hell of it, I put up like a little mini thick on Patreon of the two of them, like having sort of like a, like a, I don't know, like, like a hookup in the parking lot, like, even though they hate each other of this bar. And I threw it up on Patreon and I was like waiting to see the reaction. And they're like, yeah, no, we need that book. We need that. <laughs> book. And it reshaped how I'm going to do the whole series because now I'm like, I don't really want to tie myself to the idea of like, 
the student teacher thing. Like, why can't it be two students? Why can't it be like the two teachers? Like, and yeah. I just like, I, I don't want to lock myself in. And now because I have that real time feedback, I know that there's an interest in them just, you know, as two students or whatever, however you wanted to, you know, do that. So you can always do that too. Like if, if somebody, like if something is kind of brewing and you're like, Hmm, is it worth putting my time and effort into? You can always do something like that. Throw out a first chapter or, you know, an outline or anything and just be like, what do you think about that? Is that intriguing to you? And they will tell you like, yes, absolutely. Or nah, not my thing. Like, or, you know, and I never would have put those two together because one of them is an asshole, like an absolute <laughs> jerk. And I was like, he's such a jerk. He's not even remotely redeemable in that he's a jerk. And the other one is so nice. And they're like, no, no, that's our kryptonite. Like, no, no, we, we need <laughs> you to it's make like, him. It's like the new grumpy make sunshine him, make thing Make that guy on. suffer. Yeah. <laughs> and like, get him, like, put him in his place. Like, and I was like, okay, okay, I can do that. So like, it's it's a matter of like, really kind of gleaning deep down like what what is the, like um he taylor and her like you know what's the butter you know like yep, your yep. universal butter like you want to find out what it is exactly the <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. yeah the ghee. <laughs> like you want to find out like in <laughs> your audience what is that butter like what is it that's worth it to them to go to your patreon and pay you five dollars and i always look at it the five dollar tier because like to me if i have 10,000 people at the $5 level, that's still $6,000. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, every, everything is like, there's nobody who's not valuable to you on Patreon. Like, yeah, even people who look at your free content, if they're, if they're interacting with you, they're valuable, you know, to you, they're, they're your audience, you know? So I just kind of look at it that way. And, and with your being a, like a, an established author, you just have so much more opportunities if you ask for them if you ask for them like if you act like people are doing you a favor by looking at your patreon or whatever they're going to see it as them doing you a favor where you have to be like hey did you did you know that like i have all of this over here that you like could look at anytime you wanted to you know like yeah um and and i reuse so much content for lunatic I needed to hit a certain pre-order goal for myself, for, you know, just my own personal ego. <laughs> it's good to have and goals. So, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I'm not hitting this goal and I still have three weeks. And so my business partner was like, why don't you bundle the mini fix that you have for necessary evils from Patreon and offer that as a pre-order bonus? to people who pre-order in advance and show you that they pre-ordered. Nice. And that's what we did. And I, and I hit my bonus. I went, I smashed my bonus. So it's, it's all about like working the smarter, not harder. Like, and like I said, everything is content. Like if you wrote a chapter and it didn't make it into the book because it just didn't flow, put it up on Patreon. Like yeah. if you had a story idea and you were just like riffing and you were just like, you know what? Like, I don't know if it's anything or not. Be like, Hey guys, this is what I spent my night doing. Do you think it's worth it or not? You know, like, like anything is content because they're always so interested in what the process is that you're doing, you know? So I just never, I always have to think of it that way. Even if I like really anything, like I said, that's sticky, that stupid sticky. Like I didn't think anybody cared about that, but I made a joke about it in my Facebook group. Like, you know, when you're doing a four way scene and you have to like, you have so many people involved, <laughs> you have to like try to like, you know, diagram it on a sticky note, like, and then, like, and let's just say the stickies were, like, the stick figures were anatomically correct. Um, <laughs> and so, like, people were like, we need to see that sticky. And I'm like, I'm definitely not putting that up on Facebook. I'm like, but I'll put it up in Patreon. And so, like, people went over to Patreon to look at that. Like, there's really nothing that people won't pay to see if you just give them what they want. You know what I right. mean? Right. Like, yeah. Well, and I think it's so key. It, what when you find that thing that you really enjoy and the thing that you love, and you're you're coming from that place of this is exciting to me. This is so much like so exciting and so interesting to me. You're doing it from like a completely different level, different energy level than any time you're you're doing something yeah. because you number one think you have to or think you're trying to right. chase a dollar or you know when you're I don't even know burnt out, but you're trying one more thing. It's a completely different. Yeah 
animal and energy. And so those people notice it, they come to you and you're, you're more like a magnet when you are operating from that place. Yeah. 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 You have to be, you just have to shift your mindset. And I think this is the biggest problem I have like to get past with other authors is like, you have to stop being grateful for every sale. Like you didn't earn the money. Right. Like you have to stop being like, Oh, thank you for wasting your time on me. Like in this weird sort of like masochistic, like (laughs) like energy of like, you know, like I I don't deserve the sale or I didn't work hard enough for it. I didn't like, you know, like we've gotten to a point where we're like, people are so into this, like a book a day. Like I want you to write a book every single month, like mass market, like, people are consuming things so quickly that we get to a point where there's so many options. We think, Oh, well they, they chose me. Like, so I should be grateful because they could have picked X, Y, Z, you know what I mean? And you just have to kind of stop thinking about it in terms of like a popularity contest or like whatever. Like if you write a book and it's good and they like it, they will come back for more. It just is what it is. You know, like I said, a lot of people used to say, Oh, well, you got lucky because that girl found you on TikTok and your series blew up. But if she had found me on TikTok and she hated the book, my series wouldn't have blown up. If I didn't write a good book, it wouldn't have mattered who found me. Right. So you have to look at it that way. Like, yes, luck definitely played its part. But if I hadn't done my job, I still wouldn't be anywhere, whether she found the book or not. Like if Oprah found the book and it sucked, she would have just thrown it away. And it would have been (laughs) been it. Like, right? You know what I mean? It doesn't matter who finds your, your stuff if it's not up to par. But at the same time, you have to stop acting like every sale is a miracle. Like it's not. Right? It's what's supposed to happen? You write a book and people like it and then they buy more yes. of your books. Like yes. that's just how the world works. Like I think that was one of the things that kind of blew my mind when I first started listening to um, Amanda Francis because she was talking like, because I was still in that place where I was just like very tentative with sales. And she was like, people love to pay me. Like that is her like base operating system. Yep. People love to pay me. Yep. People pay me because they love what I'm doing. They, I, I have something to say and they need it and they love to pay me. And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People go to the movies to be entertained. They pay 11 yeah. to $15 a ticket to be entertained. And then $25 on other to- stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Concessions. And I write books too, but it's, it's kind of the same thing. Because what happens? People come to me, they read my books, right? Then they get my merch, right? So that's like the concession stand. And then they join my Patreon. And that's like the subscription service. You know what I mean? That's like the Netflix of it all. Like, but if, like, if they weren't entertained, it would, they wouldn't, it wouldn't be worth it to them. They're getting something out of it, just like you are. It's, it's not a one sided exchange. Like, you don't need to be grateful for like every sale, like, like somebody's doing you a favor that you're, you're deserved to make money doing this, you know, the the whole starving artist thing is a myth. Like it's a myth. Like you don't have to suffer for your art. You just, no, you just need to decide you're worth it. Yeah. 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 I I don't feel guilty about what I charge for my books. I don't feel guilty for having merch. I don't feel guilty for having a Patreon that's successful. And I won't, I won't feel guilty about that. I don't feel guilty for what I charge for my ebook. Like I, I work really hard at what I do. Like, like I work 10 to 15 hours a day at this, like, right. you know, like right. I you are nonstop on the make go the money that I made. Yes. And you know? I think when authors hear that, there's going to definitely be people that are like, holy cow, she is really confident. But this is exactly the thing that I've been talking about on the podcast for, I don't even know how long now, where we have to be confident yeah. in ourselves enough to know that we are worth this thing. And if anytime you hold like uh, that jealousy thing or that feeling of like, who does she think she is? That's actually just you going, Hey, I wish I had that thing. I don't. And so therefore I'm going to put blame on them. That's, that's keeping you stuck. So you got to let that go, drop that shit (laughs) and like realize that you want it too. And I get that a lot. I've, I've hit a certain point in my career where I'm now seeing how easily people turn on you when you get to a certain point in your career. Um, And a lot of people are really angry at how I run my business and that I'm successful at what I do. Like they really are. Like they, they think I charge too much. They think that I think I, I literally had somebody come to me for help 
<laughs> so wild. Somebody came to me for help and um, for with Patreon and with marketing. And we had a whole 90 minute conversation. And at the end of it, I was like, you know, if I can make this work, anybody can make this work. And she said, yeah, I've read your book. I really don't get what all the hype is. She's like, they're all right, but I really don't think they're anything special. And I was like, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> well, that was humbling. Thanks, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. I guess. I mean, all right. And, but I mean, and I'm, and I'm sure like to a lot of people, she's right. Like, but, but I don't write the books for them. I write the books for me. And I'm lucky that a bunch of other people wanted to read the stuff that I wanted to write. But like, a lot of people have that whole thing. Like, I don't get why you're successful and I'm not. Yep. And it's like, it's because I went in knowing I was going to be successful. Yes. Like, it's because I, I made a deal with myself that I wasn't going to settle for one and that I wasn't going to apologize and I wasn't going to say that I don't deserve this or that I didn't do enough to, to earn it. Or like, I have all this baggage from like, you know, like, low self-esteem stuff like I put it all aside and I was just like no I'm a good writer this is going to take off this is going to work and it has to work because I'm not going to accept anything less and people can't get past that a lot of people cannot see that all the excuses they make and all the stuff like that like everybody's always like oh no it's not my fault Amazon did this or it's not my fault this happened and it's not really a matter of fault it's a matter of mindset you know, yes. when, when you go in and you believe that you can't do it before you've even tried, you're never going to get past that. You're never, you're always going to be waiting for the other shoe to drop of like the next disaster to befall you. And, right. and then that's all you ever see. That's all you ever see is the bad stuff. You never see the good stuff. And you and I have had this conversation where sometimes I'm like, I don't even know if this is working. And you're just like, no, keep going. You're like mid manifestation. Like, you know, this is actually yes. happening for you. Because sometimes you do start to go, okay, well, there's some bad things happening. So maybe, maybe I'm not believing hard enough, or maybe I'm not doing enough, or maybe I'm not seeing enough. Or, and you have to just realize that even though bad stuff happens, it's not all bad stuff. Like the universe doesn't just change its mind. And like, you're just like, you know, <laughs> like, like the world is still turning. Like just because bad things are happening doesn't mean your manifestation isn't working. It right. just means that the world is doing what the world does. And you just have to keep going if you're going through hell keep going just keep well, going through your manifestation exactly. and we'll get to the other side well and abraham hicks talks a lot a lot about like how we don't live in an assertion world like there is no such thing as assertion so when shit goes wrong it's typically because you have something in your frequency your vibration that's allowing yeah. it in and as long as you clean up that vibration it goes away right yeah. and everyone has those thoughts that'll creep back in because we have wiring that maybe we've like fed over the years and so every wow. once in a while you a fear will crop up or a thought will crop up where you're like oh but as long as you just yeah. go that's nothing let it go and keep reframing yeah. you're just going to keep doing better and better yeah and sometimes I have to like sit down and I have to look at where I started and I have to look at where I am now and I have to be like is this as far as I want to go with this or is it like I have to appreciate where I'm at now because like whenever I hit my next goal I kind of tend to just go, okay, well, that was great. But like, it's not this goal. Like, yes. so I'm always like chasing the next goal. And sometimes I forget to stop and go, holy shit. Like, like when I saw what I made, when I saw what I made last year, I actually thought it was an accident. I thought it was a mistake. I called my accountant and I was just like, I was like, I think you made an, an error. And she's like, you're going to wish I made an error when you see how much you owe in taxes. But I <laughs> swear to you, I didn't. And I was just like, well, Okay, great, but also great. <laughs> but like, you know, like I, I get so into the small little details that sometimes I forget to step back and be like, wow, like, holy hell, like, I can't believe how far I've come from two years ago. Like, so there's, there's a lot that goes into your mindset. Like, you're not always just like happy go lucky and just like everything works out for me. Like, like right. you're a human being and you have your doubts, but you have to kind of like stop and re like you said, reframe like what's happening. And I will like put on like some vibrational music to try to like elevate where I'm at. I'll read Abraham Hicks or I'll like, I'll do stuff to try to like get myself back into the no girl, you're fine. Kind of like, yeah, this is all happening for a reason. This is all like, and I've done it in my business life and now I'm trying to do it in my personal life as far as my health and stuff like that. Good. But it's like, 
shifting that mindset, it, it was so, it was such a huge thing for me that I can literally tell you like the minute it happened, like I had done a spell and I had sat with it for an entire day. I let the whole candle burn out and I woke up the next morning and it was like, I was a different person. You know, wow. people always say like, oh, I woke up in my best timeline or whatever. Like, it yeah. kind of felt like that's what what happened. I was so convicted in that, no, I'm quitting my job. Like it's happening that I just woke up and I had felt like, like a whole burden had just been lifted off of me. And it was because I was just so certain that this is exactly what was meant to happen. And, and even when things went wrong at every turn for the first year, I was like, no, no. Like I, I had to remember that feeling of like, no, 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 this is exactly what was supposed to happen. I just have to keep believing and keep going. Like, and that's the hard part is yeah. when things go wrong, still keeping going. For like, sure. That's the biggest problem is like getting past your own bullshit. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And we have a lot of it, <laughs> especially so if you've been on it. this planet for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like it's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of baggage that we all carried around. Like right? we're all trying to overcome generational trauma and, right. and like, you know, like we're, we're being the, the we're all that, dealing with it, the stuff our parents gave us. Yes. <laughs> and it ends with us. It is done. Exactly. We're all done as a, as a generation, we're in the age of Aquarius. And I think that like every single person I know is in therapy. Every single person I know <laughs> is trying to do better for their children. You know what I mean? Like we're all yeah. trying to like take off, like, the boomer like generation like cause my parents were boomers yeah trying to shake off this this whole thing and be better people and i think that that's what the age of aquarius was always trying to tell us is that we have to go through the bad to get to the to the enlightenment that's supposed to come from this you know and like yeah. wait for the dinosaurs to die off and like <laughs> you know for yeah. the for the for the collective good to like happen but yeah. like some of us are just getting there a little faster than others. I agree. Like, and I, yeah. And I think that we're we're realizing that manifestation is a real thing. That higher energies and vibrations are a real thing. Like even scientists are realizing that now. You know what I oh, mean? Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Quantum like, physicists all field, over. Yeah. Yeah. There's fields built around this. Like, and we just have to kind of just realize it's not. You know, it's not a myth. It's real. We just have to figure out how to tap into it. Yeah, because it's like any other scientific find was magic until they could put a label yep. on it so exactly. it's just us trying to figure out how this works figuring out how we how we go about creating the rea reality that we want and deciding that it's ours i think that i yep. think it's so key is there anything else when it comes to patreon that you think authors who are like looking at it should know before we end the podcast interview today i mean one make peace with the fees that you're going to pay um, right. <laughs> well, it gets uh, taken out of the, the they payments, make it, right? Yeah. Yeah. They make it as easy as possible for everybody. Yes. And that comes at a price. You know what I mean? Like the, you're paying for the ease of merch being sent out without you and being created without you. You're paying for the ease of the platform use. And I've looked at other platforms and none of them have it as together as Patreon does. So for me, it's well worth it. But like it, it is a kick every month when you're like oh i made sixteen thousand dollars no i made nine thousand dollars what the hell <laughs> sure <laughs> so, sure so, <laughs> like, so there is like a little bit of a gut punch in in it like where you're just like oh like but but also you didn't <laughs> made it, have made any of that without patreon so right um so like for that that with your success you're going to see bigger bigger pieces of your pie kind of disappearing sure. but that's a good thing because that means you're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And really, I would say if you're not sure about where to start, start slow, maybe just have two tiers, a five and a $10 tier, a one and a $3 tier, depending on what kind of time and effort you want to put into your Patreon. Like if you want to just offer everybody one chapter a week of your work in progress, great. If you want to just offer one mini fix, do it like a dollar or $3 tier, and then just offer something small that you feel that you can commit to time-wise, whether that's once a month or once every, you know, other week or whatever, because it's more about consistency yeah. and giving them what you promise them than it is necessarily the type of content you promise them. And as you see that growth, try to find ways to like make more value for each tier 
And if you want your Patreon to be something big and, ex you know, exclusive, start putting content aside before you start really pushing to bring people in so that you're, you don't have to do everything in the moment and you're kind of proactive that's what I tell people like, you know, like I was telling you, Lucy Lennox, you know, had asked me about Patreon. I was like, get as much content created up front before you even launch a Patreon and you'll be so much more ahead of the game and feel less stressed about it. That's not who I am as a person. Right. I like to be stressed out. It's just like, I don't know. It's my crypt. <laughs> it's like, it's like what I personally do to like get high is panic. Um, <laughs> like, oh, so I person. like to just constantly feel like I am not accomplishing what I need to do, but people who are smart and people who are proactive, <laughs> they will do this stuff in advance so that they don't, you know, have their cortisol levels in the thousands. Right. Um, so that is what my my real advice would be: is to be as proactive as possible, have some content set up in advance. Even you can schedule it so you can just set yes. it and forget it. Like so, if you have a month's worth of content ready to go put it all up pre-scheduled and you don't have to think about it again. You can always be working on the next month's content. And again, consistency is better than anything. Like being consistent and letting people know that like you're committed to Patreon because too many people start a Patreon and then they just abandon it. So right. a lot of people don't like to spend money because we all forget to cancel those little subscriptions and then they pile up. I have yeah. like nine patrons that I like subscribe to. I could probably get rid of four of them, but I'm too lazy to do it. Like, <laughs> I never look at their content, but I'm just like, eh, five dollars, whatever. Like, I just, I'm too lazy sure. to do it. And that's why a lot of people don't want to give that five dollars because they know even if they never look at your stuff, they're never going to cancel that five dollars. Right, They'll be paying right? you into their grave because we're all too lazy. This is the same reason we don't cancel our Netflix or we don't like, we just don't do it. So just be consistent because then you'll get those people to subscribe and then they'll forget about you. And then you can get their festival <laughs> until they die. <laughs> well, hopefully they don't forget about you. Hopefully they read everything that's right. <laughs> no, they definitely do. Like you'll, you'll definitely, you'll see the improvement as long as you're consistent. You'll see people signing up and again, just, just interact with them and give them what they want. And, and there's not a reason for them to not stick with you. Right. I think that's so key too. And I think that's also one of the reasons why it was so I needed to wire in my head when I was setting the, up these patrons, why I wanted to pull myself away from social media, from other platforms that didn't seem like they were doing a whole lot because I wanted to get into that routine of making sure I'm putting content out. I have two pen names right now. One's actually a rom-com pen name. I don't think I've told you about that. And no. yeah, I just, I just started it. And then one's my urban fantasy. And so as I'm working on the, the rom-com side of things, I'm working on, I, I'm still over there, letting them know, doing polls, you know, posting silly memes, doing things and interacting as Carissa Andrews so that they know right. I'm still here. I'm still going to be working on the next book starting in April. But in the meantime, right. here's these fun things, you know, but it, if I would have been like still focusing so, solely on social media, instead of using Patreon as my social platform, it would have been so much harder to remember to go there. You know what I mean? Well, and that's the, yeah. And that's the thing, like, Twitter to me is like screaming into a void. Yeah, it's absolutely right. useless. I know I have a Twitter and people will interact with me on Twitter, but I don't actively interact with anybody unless they at me because there's no, there's no reason for it. If you're not a 3 million plus subscriber, like nobody sees your content, nobody interacts with your content. And that's fine because Twitter is actually like really mean. I mean, <laughs> like they cancel people every five minutes and I don't want to be canceled. So I'm fine with it. It's the same reason why my TikTok, I don't really actively try to blow up my TikTok. I post consistently or my, my social media person does, but I don't want my videos going viral. I don't want to like get 9 million like views on any one thing because that is how you get negative attention. Mm -hmm. I would rather people consistently see my videos on their feed and just go, oh, that's cool. And have that name recognition of yeah. like, oh, only James. I know that person then have like a video go viral that doesn't lead to anything good. But you know what I mean? Because I would yeah. rather have consistently just consistently be in people's feeds and, and get that name recognition than have one video go viral that really just kind of blows up and then goes away. You know, like that doesn't, yeah. that doesn't really create any kind of like 
especially since the only videos that ever seem to go viral are there one video that has nothing to do with your books. Right. What you is know? that? <laughs> Every author has that happen. They're like, oh, consistent with their books. And then they do something about like something ridiculous that has nothing to do with their books. And that's the one that blows up. And then they're like, well, that didn't help me in any way at all. Right. Or you they know? misspelled something and everyone's freaking out about the misspelling and that's it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it can, it's always something. It's always something, you know? So it's like, to me, I would rather, like, I don't want to get rid of TikTok. I don't want to get rid of, you know, Instagram, Instagram, especially that works really well for me. I want people to be able to see my name and see my trailers and see my book titles and my covers because I want that recognition when they go into Barnes and Noble and they see like one of my books, they'll be like, Hey, I saw that on TikTok or whatever. And yeah. they might be curious enough to pick it up. But like, I don't like, I don't go to TikTok to look at book stuff. I am, I am not even remotely on book talk. Like I don't, I don't look at books because to me it's like, you know, it's like, I don't know. It's like being a gynecologist. Like you just don't <laughs> want to look at another one when you get home, like that kind of thing. Like I am so booked out by the time I get home that if somebody even says the word book, my eye twitches. I'm just like, okay. Um, <laughs> so people are like, what are you reading? I'm like, not a damn thing. I am watching television. Sorry. Uh, re-watching, <laughs> rereading all this shit that I've just written today. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Cause you're just constantly in that mindset. So sometimes I just need a break. Like, so I just, I want the recognition, but if you can use Patreon as your social media and you can constantly be bringing people to Patreon, there's no downside to that. I agree. You know? I agree. I mean, even if you're only earning a couple of dollars and you're still going to want to post things anyway, you're still going to want to explain what's happening or, or share the cover reveals or whatever. And so why not well, do it on a platform where you could earn a couple of dollars? Listen, even when I was just starting my Patreon and I had like consistently 32 you know, like I, that was still like $300 a month I was bringing in. And it felt like so much money, like $300. That was yeah. gas and food. Like, like I had no money when I started this because I was living off my 401k because I was convicted that this is the right path, but I was also broke as hell. Like right. I was destitute. So, so that $300 was saving me. It felt like a million dollars. Like, like that's still a lot, you know, like you can't, you can't kind of see that like, oh, you only have 32 patrons or whatever like yeah that's still a lot of money that's still 32 people who believe in you enough to want to buy you a cup of coffee every week like yeah you know? so like everything is worth it everything is worth it and it can only go up you know I agree I think it's such a it's such a valuable platform and it's one that I since starting it like on all the different so I, I run three of them I run one for author revolutions podcast and then I have the, the two pen names and it's just been such a fun experience interacting with it, playing around with how it works. It's almost made social media fun for me again, where I felt yep. like, you know, after years and years and years of doing it, you just kind of go, Ugh. <laughs> you know? yeah. Ugh. well, because yeah. uh, especially on Instagram and, and TikTok, like you don't, you, you, it's really easy to see it's not working. Like, you know what right. I mean? And that's really disheartening. Like, yeah, like, right? it's like, oh, I got three likes on this post. Great. Like, and you kind of just feel really bad. Whereas like with Patreon, if you get any interaction, it could be from like 7,000 people seeing that post or it could be from seven and you don't know. So it's like, it's a little bit of like a thing like, hey, somebody liked it versus like, oh, only one person liked it. You know, it's just like, right. it's, a, it's a weird game you play with yourself, but it's like, it, it's not as instantly disheartening, like when something... Because a lot of times with Instagram and, and TikTok, it's not you. It's you're being hidden. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like you're yep. shadow the banned and you don't know it. The algorithm is messing with you. Like, you just don't know, especially with somebody like me who does like LGBT content. A yeah. lot of times on TikTok, they they will shadow ban you and you wouldn't even know it. Like, yep. you don't even know that you're you're not being seen. So like Patreon doesn't have that. The only drawback to Patreon is if you have 18 plus content, people cannot search your name. Okay. So and that's why it's important to have your link everywhere for your Patreon. Right. Because they cannot just go and search only James and Patreon. I am invisible unless you have the actual link to my Patreon. Or so, search you specifically. Because I, I know for when I was pulling you up, um, when I was creating like the questions to talk to you about, I was looking at it and I, I literally just searched only James Patreon and that your link comes up anyway. So it, but apparently you can't do it in the platform itself. Correct. You could search it like in Google for sure. You yeah. can type like only James Patreon and it'll pop up, but you can't go on to Patreon and search my name. Ah. You won't find me. And okay. anybody who does 18 plus content, which is most of us who write romance of any yeah. kind 
or plan on putting any kind of spicy content on there. Like that is the only drawback I find to Patreon is that they can't just search your name. You have to like give them the whole link, patreon.com slash only James kind of thing. And right. then they can find you. But that's my only drawback, but it's also safer for kids. And I would much rather it be safer for kids than, you know, and have it be an extra step for people looking for me. Yeah, you know? for sure. Like, obviously. Where can my audience find you? Obviously, Patreon is a great place, but where can they find you, your books and all the good things that you do? Like, what, where's the best place to locate you? The easiest place to find me, I mean, you can put my name in Google, obviously, like you did. And you'll right. probably find me everywhere. But uh, my link tree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash only James is the best way to find me. Like all of my links and everything are on there. Perfect. My merch store, everything. You can find pretty much anything you need to know about me or where to find me on my link tree. Awesome. And I'll make sure that that is in the show notes as well. So that if anyone's looking for it, they can just go to the show notes and grab it right there. Cool. Well, only thank you so much for being here and talking about Patreon and and how your mindset really shifted in order to help you with your success. Because I think that's just one more, one more example of how it is so important, you know, to do that. And hopefully everyone who's listening goes, you know, whether it's Patreon, whether it's Kickstarter, whether you decide you're just going to go with, you know, Amazon or whatever, having the right mindset is so key and critical to your, your success. So thank you for being here. Yeah, that's, it really is. Yeah. Oh, thank you for having me as always. Well, guys, not only did only, (laughs) not only did only, isn't that fantastic? Not only did only give us some really great tips and information on how to use Patreon for our author platform, for having and interacting with our readers, for all the good things that we can do with this particular platform, but she gave some really interesting insights and tips about mindset that I wasn't anticipating before we started. Like, I didn't know how much manifestation is actually part of her everyday process and how that became a piece of her ultimate success. So I hope you're taking notice of how this happens. Like, we are very powerful creators. And as we choose and decide for ourselves what gets to work, that's what starts to show up in our lives, right? So if you are looking at becoming part of this whole Patreon experience, only is in the process. She's got a wait list now for her Patreon courses. I will make sure that the link is in the show notes so you can get that right there and sign up for her wait list, okay? She'll be releasing it later on this year, I believe. And if there are any questions or anything like that, just let me know or reach out to Only. I'll make sure that her link tree is also in the show notes. And overall, I hope this experience, this podcast episode, has given you some food for thought on new ways that you can leverage your author career and really make it your own. Because we are, like I said, the deliberate creators of this whole experience, and we get to choose how it works for us. And so if social media isn't working for you, or if you want to have a deeper connection with your readers, Patreon just might be the right choice, right? All right, if you'd like to grab the transcript to today's podcast episode, head over to authorrevolution.org forward slash 185, and you can download it there. Plus, of course, get all those show note links that I just mentioned earlier. Overall, I hope you take this advice, run with it, and do some amazing things with your author career. We have so many incredible new opportunities available to us. And I know for myself, at least, The whole idea of Patreon is really inspiring and I'm enjoying that process. Maybe you will too, all right? So go forth and start your author revolution.